Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing kind of a special World Anvil tutorial. How to create world history and lore for your world in World Anvil. Now I've actually covered World Anvil and how to use it generally on this channel. I have a great general overview and tutorial for World Anvil. A link to that video will be in the description and at the end of the video. But I'm going to stop plugging and blabbering on, and let's get right into today's video. Welcome to D20 in Disguise. So, here we are on World Anvil. Now, if you don't know what World Anvil is, World Anvil is an amazing online tool for world building. Whether you're a writer, a storyteller, a GM like me, you can create a world for your purposes. The world which we're looking at right now on screen is called the Wraith Globe. The Wraith Globe is my main fantasy world which I'm working on right now. Now I have over like a hundred different articles on different things in this world. And all of those different articles contribute to the history, the lore, of the world. Now, how exactly do you start interweaving all of these different things in your world? Well, the first step is very simple. You scroll on down, here we can see all of the templates for different articles, and just start creating articles. Everything can be integrated into the history and lore of your world. What was what was the history of a building? What was the lore of an ethnicity? Why was a religion created? Who created it? What sparked a plot? All of these things have their own lores. What I like to think of it as is kind of like a tree. All of these different branching things, all of these different things in your world, there's thousands of them probably, from a small little item uh, a tavern, a town, a uh, religion, a nation, all of these different things slowly snake back to one focal point. And that focal point snakes out to everything else. Everything is interconnected in your world in some way or another. And that is the beauty of making a world realistic. Everything needs to be connected. For example, in our, in our real world, everything is continuing to become more and more connected through globalization. And that's just a natural fact of life. So, to make your world seem natural, it should also be a fact of life there. Now, back to the tree analogy which I was using. That one focal point where everything starts from is called your origin or your creation story. Now, everything needs a cr origin or creation story. For example, a weapon's origin or creation story would be when it was first forged or discovered. Geography's creation story or origin would be when it was first founded or when it was first created, either way. A condition's origin or creation story would be when it first mutated into what it is now. Really, like, you can put an origin and history into almost anything. Everything should have a history. Like, how did it evolve? into what it is today? That's the question which you should be asking yourself when creating an article for pretty much anything. Now, probably the biggest and most important origin or creation story is the creation story of your entire world. How did it come into being? How was it created? And you can go a bunch of different ways with this. You can use divine intervention. You can use uh, scientific laws. You can use pretty much anything you want. And remember, this origin story of your world should then be reflected in the rest of your world. This is what was the beginning of your world. It should be important. It should be of significance in pretty much everything in your world. So once you have your origin story for your world completed and thought out, how do you document it on world end? Well, let me show you. Now there's two ways you can actually get to where I'm going. Firstly, you can go to the bottom left corner and you can click on the little timelines and calendars section or you can go ahead and scroll on up, use World Anvil's 
handy dandy quick search and just type in create timeline and there you go so let's just use artemis and start creating a timeline okay so we're going to start creating our timeline in the right column here so let's name this timeline now timelines can range from very a chain of very minor events to once again the history of your entire world they're very useful and very versatile so let's just say that we're going to make this timeline about the history of the dragonborn as a people in my world so we're going to just say the history of the dragonborn peoples and as a description um That's just a very simple description, kind of explaining the general gist of the history of the Dragon War. Next, we're going to click Advanced Options. Uh, so type Normal Parallel or Major Master. Uh, major Master is essentially your master timeline. The timeline of your entire world. For example, you can actually see right here, Multiverse Timeline, Pardum Globus. That is my master timeline. Uh, so we're just going to choose normal parallel. Related calendar, calendar of Talmar. You can also create calendars to go along with your timelines with different names for months. How many months are in your year? How many days are in each month? It's just nice flair. It's nice detailer. It's nice tone. Uh, related article. I'm just going to go through here and pick out one of the most prominent, which is the brief. The Dragonborn. Now, the brief is the native name for the Dragonborn in my world. And then we're just going to click Create Timeline. So now we have Timeline Preview. It's literally just a vertical line. So to change that, we're first going to go into Add an Era to your timeline. So we're going to just name this era the Draconic Drift. That's a very important journey in my world for the Dragonborn. They were driven off the main continent by the other races and they were set adrift for quite a while before they happened to stumble upon an isle which they could inhabit and survive on. So we're gonna name this the Draconic Drift. Description. The Draconic Drift is one of the greatest journeys. Now, the era abbreviation is kind of the AD or the BC of your world, just that kind of measure of time abbreviation. So in my world, the Wraith Glow, it is Pardum Globus. That's PG, but it can be whatever you want in your world. Uh, let's go down to start date, what year this era starts. Now, this has to connect back to your master timeline. If you haven't created your master timeline yet, I would highly suggest starting with your master timeline and going to smaller timelines, working to smaller local timelines. But it needs to be clear when this is happening relative to your master timeline. If you don't know that, then it's going to be a little confusing. Now, if you want it to be vague, if you want when this is happening to be vague, that can work. But try to make it clear when local timelines are happening relative to your master timeline, your world time. In my world, the Draconic Drift happens in 607 PG. So, 607 PG... End date, also 607 PG. And we're gonna create that era. So now we can see in our timeline preview, we have the Draconic Drift, 607 PG through 607 PG. The Draconic Drift is one of the greatest journeys in all of history, blah, 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 blah. And then it also has orphan histories. Uh, these histories are under a timeline with eras, but do not belong to any era. These histories are not visible to anyone apart from the owner of the world and its co-authors. In order to display them in the history, create an era which contains the starting years 
of your histories. Okay, we're not going to worry about orphan histories. It's kind of explained there. What we are going to worry about are creating historical entries. Now, to find the historical entries, you're going to want to scroll down to Actions. Go ahead and just click on that and hit Create New Historical Entry. What that brings us to is another screen to fill in all the blanks. Um, for the title of this historical entry, let's just say uh, the rebuking of the dragonborn. And then starting date. This is where things kind of get a bit messy because, at least in my mind, I don't keep a clear note of like the month, year, and hour that things happen. But it is important. It is important to keep that detailed archive of when things happen in the year. Because that also contributes to weather and uh, harvest time and all, all of that stuff. But we're just going to enter uh, 607 PG because this only happens in one year, the Draconic Drift. Then let's put it early in the year, maybe February 13th. Don't it really have to fill up the hour? Ending date, there isn't really an ending date. Now, in significance, this is also very important. In your master timeline, there will be a lot of historical events which have a higher significance because your master timeline should be an overview of the history of your world, not the tiny little things in your world which are trivial in the grand scheme of things. But in local timelines like this, they can be a little on the less important side, each historical entry. So let's say I'm going to keep this on important national because the rebuking of the Dragonborn may not be that important at first, but later in my history, the Dragonborn actually save all of the other races. So it's honestly pretty important in the end. So I'm going to put that as important national. A type. Now, there are a lot of choices for what kind of historical entry this is. For this, this would probably be more of a cultural change. So let's see, artistic creation, celestial, civil action, construction, beginning or end, criminal activity, cultural event. There are a bunch of different choices for what kind, what type of historical entry you're making. So I'm probably going to put this under population, migration, and travel because the whole population of a race is literally going off this main continent and sailing away. It's a population migration. Now, timelines. This is where you select what timelines this actual event will be in. So let's put it in our history of the Dragonborn peoples. Makes sense. You can also put in multiple timelines. I might actually also put this in my master timeline because this is a pretty important part of my history. Like, it should be documented in the master timeline as well. And then we have a short description of what happened. Uh, let's say... So that's a pretty nice short little description of what happened in this historical event. But remember, the description of the historical event isn't really the most important part of it. I think it's just having a lot of shorter historical entries so that you have the general gist of the entire history of your world. And you can kind of get a feel for how this world would shape up in the present because of its history. Now, in my world, there's been a lot of changes over a very short amount of time. So, mm, the political and cultural side of the world is actually pretty unstable in a lot of places. So, remember that the history of your world kind of reflects what your world is presently like now. If you have a very stable, linear timeline, then that should be how the world is in the present. If you have a very chaotic timeline like mine, with a lot of changes, then that should also be how your world is today. It should really reflect the history of your world. And remember that 
everything in your world which is found today came from there. So making the history and lore of your world is one of the most important parts of world building. Without a history, it doesn't feel real. This adds so much realism to your world. So we're going to scroll back up to create historical entry, go ahead and click on that, and then we can go back to our timeline. And there we go. We have the Draconic Drift. The Draconic Drift, blah, 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 blah. And then right there, you can see we have the rebuking of the Dragonborn, population migration or travel. And it actually looks very nice. You can actually go to your world homepage, scroll down, and it will have a separate timeline section and we can go to the history of the Dragonborn peoples and we can see there it looks very nice and it outlines the details of this event and this era of the world. And honestly, I think that is creating world history and lore for your world in World Anvil outlined pretty darn well. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you have any questions about World Anvil timelines, creating history and lore in World Anvil, then please ask down in the comments. I would be happy to answer any of your questions, anything you need. And I honestly think that's about it. If you enjoyed today's video, then please be sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my uploads. Now, I know with all of this coronavirus stuff going around and quarantine and ugh, it's gonna be a hard time but either way i hope you all have a great day keep on creating and i will see you in the next video Let go.